more complicated uh, parameterization I want to go over. So suppose the wind doesn't blow my paper away. I roll a disc and watch the path traced by a point on the edge of that disc. So, so here is my disc in its first position, initial position here, and I'm going to take this point at the base and I'm going to watch it. And then I push the disc and let it roll along this flat surface here. And then I watch what happens to that point. So here's a roll just a little bit later. And then if I roll the disc some more, I'll get another point, and another point, and another point. And after the disc rolls halfway around so that this point is at the top, I'll have covered a, a, a half a rotation, which we could call pi, right? If I, if I say this is my rotation here. Um, another thing to note, uh, if this radius was 1, that would be pi. Uh, as I roll the circle along here, when this point gets back to the bottom again, I'll have done one complete revolution, which means I'm, the bottom here is, is the circumference of the circle rolled out linearly. Okay, so the distance from the bottom point here to the circle returns back to its bottom point is one rotation. So for a circle of radius 1, I'd go pi, 2 pi. For a circle of radius r, I'd have pi r and 2 pi r. I guess 2 pi r is the circumference of a circle of radius r. Anyway, I have to zoom in on this a little bit. Uh, when I roll the circle just a little bit, I want to figure out what the coordinates of this point are, x and y. And one way to, to let that happen is, uh, I initially started with my point at the bottom. The point moved, the circle rotated. Well, how much did the circle rotate? Well, uh, this radius from the center down to the bottom is now from the center over to that point. And so this angle theta got swept out as the circle rolled. <clears throat> Think about your trigonometry. This would be the adjacent side to that angle. So this side here would measure r cosine theta. This is the opposite side, so it would be r sine theta right there. The distance uh, horizontally from here to here is just the amount of the circle that touched the ground from there to there which is, a, is an arc length. So this arc right there is what had touched the ground from here to here. And to figure out arc length, you just take radius times your radian angle. Okay. R theta is the distance from there to there. And to get this x coordinate there, I just need to back up how far? Well, I need to back up r sine theta. So that means the x distance is r theta minus r sine theta. Okay. I'll take a minute to think about that. Oh, there go my notes. Some of them. Uh, here, vertically, this y value, well, the center of the circle is up here at r. I need to drop down from r this distance right here, r cosine theta. So the y value, go up to r and drop down r cosine theta, gets you at the right height. So according to that triangle right there, y should be r minus r cosine theta. And so what you have here is the parameterized formula. Here, my parameter is the angle of this initial radius moving from a, a vertical down position as the circle rolls along this flat plane there. Uh, the path that's created, those dots connected above, forms what's called a cycloid. If you look it up online, it comes up with some physical problems called the uh, autochrome problem, which I highly recommend you read about. I'll talk about those later. Arc length. Uh, when we first did arc length, we talked about little delta x's and little delta y's. And if you think back about our original discussion, you can pretty quickly come to the conclusion that for parameterization, uh, you get this cool version of the Pythagorean theorem, where you have uh, dx d theta squared plus dy d theta squared inside the square root to figure out a little chunk of uh, diagonal distance. And so we want to add up all those little chunks as we go, as theta goes from 0 to pi over 2. So uh, I didn't write it down here, but you could figure out, uh, let's see which one did I write first, dx d theta, taking the derivative of x with respect to theta, you get r minus cosine theta, the r, r cosine theta, the r can be pulled out, square it, and you get that. 